yesterday we ended up getting our blog post from Treyarch talking about Days of Summer for Xbox One and PC, a little bit about the leadoff update for PlayStation 4 with things like Alcatraz, and then we also got a mention of contracts, something we heard in an official capacity for the first time as of last week and will be coming as of later this month. Now, if I were to guess again, that's probably around June 25th, that final Tuesday of the month, and we're told that we're going to have more information here on this coming next week in a dedicated blog post just towards contracts. But thinking about it more and more as of yesterday, I'm starting to wonder if what was shown yesterday was truly just a concept art piece that realistically is just a testing ground, something that kind of gauges the interest in those challenges and rewards that were showcased, whether or not it was something that was realistic and something that could have been accepted by the community. Meanwhile, we ended up seeing that for one reserve case, you had to win 10 games of domination, which isn't worth all that trouble if you ask me for one reserve case. So maybe this was truly a testing ground. Maybe this was something where Treyarch are trying to gauge the waters. Or maybe I'm entirely off base. Maybe this actually is something that's going to happen exactly as we saw. Or maybe it's literally just mock concept art like I do here in my videos sometimes. Where I have something that I want to convey to you guys, but I have no feasible or practical imagery that I can just screen cap from in-game because it's not in there yet. Today I want to talk about some of the variables that we may be facing here before we end up seeing some more details come next week and the full blog post here for this. Plus, also also, give you my ways to improve. So if anybody at Treyarch is listening, of course, feel free to use this stuff, man. I'm all for it. But I want to talk about how contracts can be done a little further than what we saw and hopefully some ways that are already implemented. And if they're not, maybe they can be changed in time for a launch. If you guys are interested in this and any other Call of Duty content, maybe considering that subscribe button and with nearly 55% of users not subscribed, if you're interested in daily content, again, no pressure, but if you're interested, we do daily stuff here. But that said, what may be coming? Because Obviously, I think there has to be more than what we just saw in that mock concept piece, because as we know, there's going to be ways to earn reserves across MP, Blackout, Zombies, and League Play, not just MP, and what was showcased were three challenges or contracts within the after-action report of MP, meaning they're active and the player was going for them, either in that game passively or actively. So, truth be told, I definitely think there are going to be more here than what was just listed. I mentioned kind of as an amendment to the video yesterday in the pinned comments, but the these challenges or challenges like them we may end up seeing because you can't put something up front that is a way higher reward because then you start to set the precedent and the expectation that more are going to be on the way exactly like that and you kind of set that baseline where players start to think well if it's anything lower well then it's not worth it and it's falling short or they're not doing their job right and so in that case I understand that same logic where you have to keep it kind of level-headed and a little balanced yesterday we talked about I don't understand why you start with what is hopefully just the weakest one showcasing them I would have hope to at least see some transparency into some of the higher rewards that we'd end up seeing whether that be a straight up blunt hey you're only going to be able to get this once a month or once a week or something like that but they will be there that at least gives that reassurance that you're not only going to be going for xp and reserves within these contracts there are going to be those things that are more worthwhile to players depending on what you're looking for but logically not every contract and especially in a daily capacity like how it sounds can be a weapon bribe no matter how much we hope for it that just isn't something we're going to be seeing but that said i do think that what may be coming is more than just those xp and reserve cases or rewards we don't know a couple of variables, so firstly, we don't know if these are just a display of some weak tier ones that a player selected out of an entire library of challenges. When I reference this, I kind of want to reference World War II's contracts and order system, because you naturally had contracts that were supply drops, or in this case, reserves, and you had those rare supply drops, which hopefully would translate over to reserve crates. So in that case, maybe the menu of selectable contracts in probably, say, Blackjack's neck of the woods is holding a little more. You'll have those ones like we see here for those reserve crates and those XP, but maybe you have those higher tier or ultra level contracts and rewards, one for a bribe, maybe one for a weapon contract, or a few harder ones for a reserve crate, not a case. So in that sense, whenever I think about it, I always still come back to that sort of tile of nine system that World War II had, where you have ones that do have XP, you do have those ones that are regular supply drops, but then you also have those ones that are rare supply drops and a weapon contract as well. 
We also don't know the full extent of the mention of additional earnable duplicate protected weapon bribes. We don't know if that's going to be a way for special contracts to be coming back in a weekly or monthly capacity, where we end up seeing every week or so we can end up activating a weapon bribe contract. We also don't know the full extent of how much it means when it's mentioned that players will be able to choose and complete more contracts each day than ever before. But that kind of ties back into me thinking there will be a selectable menu with maybe say six to nine contracts a day, which hopefully by the laws of probability and numbers, then we do have something better than just reserves and XP out of what was showcased as of yesterday's blog update. But that said, that's a lot of variables that we don't exactly know. And of course, that also means that there's room for error, there's room for interpretation, and there's room for improvement, which is where I want to talk about how if these things can get implemented by launch, whether they're there already, or if they are something that's based off community feedback, they can end up being implemented. I'd be happy with any number of those things, so long as they actually happen. The first thing being weapon contracts. The whole past week in my criticism has been predicated on one thing, that being the fact that they did something they said they never would at the beginning of the year, in which they said no weapons would be in drops and all weapons would be organically unlockable. Keep to that. That's something that I think is absolutely imperative to this entire system. This is no doubt a ploy to garner as much revenue before the next game comes along and probably to make up for some lost sales given lower revenues than anticipated with Black Ops 4, but there needs to be an alternative. We've talked about this so many times because right now there are multiple things that do not have an alternative other than just putting in your actual money, opening up your wallet for those things. One of those things being actual reserve crates. But not to get too far off topic, right now there is literally no other alternative to earning these new weapons of the Peacekeeper, the S6 Stingray, the Locust, and the Ballistic Knife other than either putting in an absolutely insane and unfathomable amount of time into the game, which 99.9% .9 of players do not have. Unless you literally have the ability to play this game 24-7, nobody's going to be able to get those just organically out of reserves unless you're the luckiest person on earth to which if you have all four just out of single reserve cases my man go buy a lottery ticket right now but when you consider there are people out there that do call of duty content for a living and that's their job and they still don't have the time for it there's an issue with that the only other way to do that is, well, obviously that weapon bribe, which is a less than 8% chance in the contraband stream, but then you end up opening up the idea of paying for supply drops for a better chance at that. I unfortunately don't think that we're going to see this method of introducing weapons go away at this point. I think that each upcoming contraband stream may introduce one or two new weapons, but then outside of that, we might end up seeing more added into reserves. And so if that's the case, there needs to be an alternative here for this. And at the very bare minimum, if weapon contracts can't come in the same regard, Guard that World War II has them, where you have the option to get every single weapon, it's just a matter of time before you have to activate each of those. Well, then make special contracts a thing. Make sure that there's a weekly rotation or a monthly rotation where you can get not just a regular weapon bribe with a Mark II weapon included in it, but I'm talking a weapon weapon bribe where you end up getting guaranteed one of those weapons, the S6 Stingray, the Ballistic Knife, the Peacekeeper, or the Locust, and whatever it is included going forward. Make sure those are definitely obtainable, again, whether in weapon contracts themselves or special contracts. I'll take anything at this point. Additionally, another quick mention coming back to it kind of is that I think there needs to be reserve crate contracts, rewards that grant reserve crates, not just necessarily reserves. And again, this might come down to that nine tile sort of scenario we talked about with World War II, but there is no alternative other than simply buying them outright. There is no way to organically get three items at a single time in Black Ops 4 right now for reserves. You only have those singular reserve cases, which give you one item and are not dupe protected. And that's another thing I'd love to see is, can we get at least some of these rewards for contracts dupe protected? There's over 1,100 items in with the opportunity to get duplicates, so your percentage that is already small enough got cut in half immediately by the option that maybe you roll a duplicate. So theoretically, with that many items in, I don't think duplicates have a place to begin with, but at the very least, make these contracts or some of these contract rewards duplicate protected. Additionally, another thing that I found curious was the XP contracts themselves. To me, either remove XP contracts altogether or repurpose them. Personally, I've never really had an issue with leveling progression and time unless we're considering maybe blackout, but that's because literally the mode is predicated on inconsistencies in terms of leveling compared to MP because there's so many 
many variables that can dictate and change the outcome of what you end up coming out of the game with. But personally, I've never found an issue with the, say, MP progression rates. I've put in, I think, like three days of playtime, maybe three and a half or something like that in MP. And I think I'm like prestige five or six. That's really not all that bad when consider the grind that had to go into MP in other games. And so in that sense, I don't think that I have a problem. I don't think XP is what I need. And especially when you consider, say, players that are now eight months into the game, master prestiges and level 1000 XP isn't as valuable to them as you may consider. Of course, that's the 1%, but the point still remains. If I were to toss a suggestion out there, I'd suggest maybe how we've seen in the past XP percent boost bonuses for say 60 minutes. I'd say do that with tier progression, where for one tier, two tiers, or maybe an entire day, we end up seeing that you have a 25% boost on top of whatever you have from the special order. It's not permanent and it doesn't last forever, but it's something that is a little more valuable to players probably than maybe just a thousand XP. And kind of wrapping this all up here with this again, these are my suggestions that hopefully something like this is either already being implemented or could be implemented. And what we see out of that preview that we had as of yesterday is literally just a mock concept or something that doesn't really showcase the full gravity of what we'll be getting here with this, but instead is just a small, very little teaser which again, I still don't understand why if that's the case, and it is the worst of the worst that you're showcasing why you choose to do that, but I digress. We've mentioned in the past that contracts have very minimal room for error, if any at all. So I'll make a bold statement here. Even though it's eight months into the game as of today, I'd gladly hold out for this by another two weeks or so to launch with Operation 5, if this is what is necessary to bring a high level standard and something that is not only rewarding to players, but keeps them engaged, if that's something that is necessary and to see things like this where it's worthwhile, a weapon bribe that is a consistent thing or a weapon contract that is on a weekly rotation or you end up seeing reserve crates instead of cases as rewards or removing XP contracts or anything that we've suggested. If that's what it takes, I think that I'd be okay with that. If what we get at the end of the month is just what we see in that preview card and those are the real rewards and reworks need to be made, honestly, just hold it. I'd much rather have a finished product at launch and the team and community be proud of what is put out here with this as the end product compared to something that is less than rewarding or doesn't deliver in the ways that it realistically should. I'm hoping for a big launch here with this and I'm hoping for some good things to come of it because truthfully, Black Ops 4 could use a win right now. But at the same time, my suggestions are out there and maybe we end up seeing some of this stuff happen. Maybe we don't, but time will tell. Next week, we'll end up seeing a lot more on the topic, hopefully, and to get a better understanding of how things will work out. To which at that point, maybe we have a little more optimism, maybe a little more pessimism, whatever it may be. But up until then, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, MP, Blackout, Zombies. We got you covered with the best of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. So if any of that you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing and if you guys also follow me over on twitter and instagram there's the best places to get connected outside of youtube practically live on both those so if you guys want to check out a conversation ask me a question what it may be that link is down there in the description below but all that said another way thank you guys all so much for watching my express i'll see you guys later take care and peace